Well, I'm Alex Bumas, the downtown Ray Mello. You're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Monday, June 29th, 2020, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Enter Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com, the yeah, iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Oh, everyone had a fantastic weekend. The release dates for Mulan and Bill and Ted Face the Music has been changed again due to the coronavirus pandemic. Mulan, the live-action remake of the 1998 cartoon adventure, was scheduled to open in theaters on July 24th, but will now debut August 21st. Disney's co-chairman and chief creative officer Alan Horn and co-chairman Alan Berkman said in a statement on Friday, while the pandemic has changed our release plans for Mulan and we will continue to be flexible as conditions required, it has not changed our belief in the power of this film and its message of hope and perseverance. Director Nikki Caro and our cast and crew have created a beautiful, epic, and moving film that is everything the cinematic experience should be, and that's where we believe it belongs, on the world stage and the big screen for audiences around the globe to enjoy together. Bill and Ted Face the Music, which reunites Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter for a third comedy adventure in the Bill and Ted film franchise, has been slated to debut in theaters on August 21st. It will now open on August 28th. Most cinemas have been closed and film television production shut down since March in keeping with social distancing practices intent to slow the spread of the coronavirus. Now knowing when the health crisis will subside has meant many more uh, movie releases uh, due dates have been postponed, with some films bypassing theaters altogether and debuting on video on demand platforms. Margot Robbie has signed on to star in a new film in the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. Bird is a prey scribe Christina Hodson is penning the screenplay for Disney's as yet untitled project, and Jerry Bruckheimer will once again serve as producer. Tony Depp starred in five previous pirate movies released between 2003 and 2017, which were inspired by the Disney theme park ride. The Eurobi film is not intended to be a spin-off of the Depp blockbusters and will be an original story with new characters. No details about the plot have been known yet. Beyonce will release a new visual album called Black is King on Disney Plus on July 31st. The project, which Beyonce wrote, directed, and produced, is based on her album The Lion King, The Gift. A press release from Disney and Parkwood Entertainment said the film, quote, reimagines the lessons of The Lion King for today's young kings and queens in search of their own crown. The statement also says Black is King is a celebratory memoir for the world on the black experience. Uh, the film is a story of for the ages that informs and rebuilds the present, a reunion of cultures and shared generational beliefs, a story of how the people left most broken have an extraordinary gift and purposeful future. A minute-long teaser for Black as King can now be seen on the entertainer's website. Beyonce released a new single called Black Parade last week. Uh, she was also honored for her, human, uh, her humanitarian work at the BT Awards ceremony Sunday night. She lent her voice to the lioness character of Nala in the anime remake of The Lion King last year. A star-studded remake of the classic comedy adventure The Prince's Bride has been filmed in actors' homes during the COVID pandemic, featuring Jennifer Garner, Hugh Jackman, Joe Jonas, Sophie Turner, Tiffany Haddish, Keegan-Michael Key, and Josh Gad. The movie will have its debut Monday on the streaming service QB. Juno and Ghostbusters afterlife filmmaker Jason Reitman pulled the footage together from what was shot in the remote locations and edited into a hilarious home video version of the beloved family flick. The message accompanied a two-minute video clip showing Jonas dressed up as a bearded Princess Buttercup and Turner, his real-life pregnant wife, costumed as the Dread Pirate Roberts, also known as Wesley. Together, they battled a rodent of unusual size, their dog, in their backyard, which doubles for the fantasy story's fire swamp. Gardner wrote on her own Instagram post, Only a Jason Reitman could talk me and a Tiffany Haddish and a Joe Jonas into playing Princess Buttercup from home. Uh, she added, You can find all of us and so many more Buttercups and Wesleys 
on Acubi, who, all swashbuckling aside, donated a million dollars to at the WC Kitchen to feed people during the COVID crisis. Thank you for the reasons to play dress up and have a laugh. You are the best, Jason. The Princess Bride Home movie is intended to raise money for the World Central Kitchen, which provides meals for people impacted by the pandemic. The project was inspired by Rob Reiner's 1987 film adaptation of William Goldman's uh, Not The original movie stars Robin Wright, Carrie Hills, Manny Patekin, Andre the Giant, Chris Sarandon, Wallace Shawn, Billy Crystal, and Carol Kane. Mike Henry has announced he will no longer voice the black character of Cleveland on the animated TV series Family Guy. Uh, Henry told on, uh, tweeted on Friday, it's been an honor to play Cleveland on Family Guy for 20 years. I love this character, but persons of color should play colors, uh, characters of color. Therefore, I will be stepping down from the role. In addition to Family Guy, Henry also played the character on the Cleveland show for four seasons from 2009 to 2013. Uh, actresses Kristen Bell and Jenny Slade also announced this week they have given up the biracial animated characters that they've been voicing in, in both Central Park and Big Mouth so biracially, uh, so biracial actresses could play them. The changes are being made after thousands of people around the world have been protesting for weeks demanding racial equality and social justice. The producers of the upcoming Broadway production of American Buffalo in the Minutes saw the, the say that the state shows will not open this year's plan. Most theaters remain closed due to the social distancing practices implemented to slow the spread of the coronavirus. The producers said in a statement, it is the intent to open these plays, both powerful, funny, and relevant dissections of Americana, in the spring of 2021 on the exact dates they were scheduled to open in 2020. However, we will only do so knowing that the safeguards in place are there will encourage audiences to return to the theaters and that our government will allow us to have gatherings of more than 500 people. We, the producing team, believe that a vaccine is essential as part of that process, and we are hopeful that progress will be made in that area to ensure that artists and theater goers will return to support this vital element of our theatrical heritage, the American play. David Mammoth's American Buffalo and Tracy Letts' The Minutes are now slated to begin produ uh, performances in March of 2021. Casting is expected to be announced in the coming months. Milton Glazer, the graphic designer, remember for brightly colored posters, magazines, book covers, and record sleeves, and the iconic I Love New York logo, died on Friday on his 91st birthday. According to Glazer's wife, Shirley, he died of a stroke, but also had suffered from renal failure. Glazer also made his mark in publishing as part of a small team that reinvented the Sunday edition of the recently defunct New York Herald Tribune, a New York magazine. Glaze, uh, the magazine's obituary for Glazer says, if they're talented and they're lucky, designer, artist, creators get to love an, an icon out of into the larger culture. The offenders Stratocaster guitar, say, or Shepard Furs Obama poster. If they're great, maybe they created too. Milton Glazer, though, operated on another planet. He just kept hitting the bullseye again and again throughout his seven decades as an illustrator, graphic designer, art director, visual philosopher, and paterfamilias. Born in 1929 to Hungarian immigrants, Glazer took drawing classes with Raphael and Moses Sawyer, the school, uh, rather the social realist artist, that enrolled in the High School of Music and Arts in the Manhattan, now the Furel de, La, de La Guardia High School of Arts and Music and Performing Arts. <coughs> He didn't work for a package design company before enrolling at the Cooper Union for the Advancement of Science and Art. Glazer graduated in 1951 and won a Fulbright scholarship to the Academy of Fine Arts in Bologna, Italy. In 1954, Glazer opened uh, Pushpin Studios with several Cooper Union classmates and launched a promotional publication called the Pushpin Almanac later remained the Pushpin Monthly Graphic, credited with opening up designs to a wider range of influences and styles and grabbing the attention of magazines and advertising agencies. Glazer says, we were excited by the very idea that we could use anything in the visual hi history of humankind as influence. For one of his best-known designs, a 19, uh, colorful 1967 poster included the Bob Dylan's Greatest Hits. 
Laser created an outline of the singer's head that was inspired by Marcel Duchamp as well as Islamic art. 1977, Glazer worked pro bono for the New York State Department of Commerce as part of a campaign to bring tourists to New York State. Drew the I Love New York in crown on the back of the envelope in a taxi cab. He expected the campaign to just last a couple of months. Instead, it became widely recognized as a symbol of New York City, enjoying enduring popularity through the, uh, throughout the 80s and a revival after the September 11, 2001 attacks that fell the city's Twin Towers. Laser said in 2011, I'm flabbergasted by what happened to this little simple nothing of an idea. Lars Franks Jr., the rapper who performed under the name Huey, was fairly shot in Missouri. He was 32. The St. Louis County Police Department said Franks had at least one gunshot wound when he was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. An identified 21-year-old man was also hospitalized with non-life-threatening injuries in connection with the incident, which police took place outside of a Kenok home late Thursday night in front of about 10 people. Police have not disclosed a possible motive or said that they have any suspects in the case. Enrico Washington, the rapper's former manager and longtime friend, said of Franks, he enjoyed life, just happy about life. You're talking about a young man who still had a lot of life to live. The hip-hop artist was best known for his 2006 hit, Pop, Lock, and Drop It. Rapper Little Baby's My Turn is the number one album in the United States for a second weekend. Coming in at number two on the Billboard 200 charts dated Saturday is Lady Gaga's Chromatica, followed by The Baby's Blame It on Baby at number three, Post Malone's Hollywood's Bleeding at number four, and Drake's Dark Lane Demo Tapes at number five. Running right at the top tier of Future's High Off Life at number six, Gunna Wanna's at number seven, Little Uzi Vert's Eternal Tick at number eight, Polo G's The Goat at number nine, and The Weeknd's After Hours at number ten. And that is your entertainment report for Monday, June 29, 2020. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at the entertainment report or on Instagram at the entertainment report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of the entertainment report anytime you want on iTunes iHeartRadio, just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.